scripture is a complete written revelation of God. May your circumstance and your situation change as you are hearing my voice. You will begin to have heavenly download. Receive that in the name of Jesus. You too shall stand. You shall stand. yes yes lord we have gathered in this room oh lord just to worship and to give you glory oh god to receive from you to hear from you jesus we pray let our eyes of understanding oh lord be opened be enlightened in the name of jesus let the spirit of revelation in in the knowledge of christ oh god yes be released upon us today in the name of jesus christ oh lord let there be a river oh god yes lord a river of the Holy Spirit in this place in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord let your will O God be done in this room guys as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord let every heavy burdens be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord let your will O God let your power manifest in this place in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord because where your spirit is there is liberty let there be a leap a freedom let there be freedom oh god let there be a liberation in this place oh god yes in worship in praise oh god in the name of jesus christ the lord we pray oh father that this moment oh god yes lord will be a great moment to every one of us oh lord even those who are watching wherever they are watching from in the name of jesus christ the lord be glorified, O oh God, and be magnified, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we open our mouth, O oh God, as we break forth into singing, O oh God, let your glory come down, O oh God. Let heaven, O oh God, yes, be respond in Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise and glory, Jesus, this afternoon, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Sing with me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God All together, all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me Come on, sing louder to the King Here I am to I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. One more time. Here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God.
darkness open my eyes let me see the beauty the beauty that made this heart I adore you hope hope for a life spent with you light of the world sing light of Lift our voices to Him. You are. We are singing to the King of Kings. Tell Him, Here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am. Let angels hear you say, Here I am, here I am to worship. Here I am, here I am to bow. Here I am, here I am to say, Jesus, you are my one more time. Here I am, here I am to worship. 
worship. Here I am to bow. Oh, here I am to say that you're my God. Take all together, all together, lovely, all together. Leave those sent to him. Surrender everything and give him worship. Leave those sins and open up your mouth. Let the sound of worship be released in atmosphere this afternoon. Yes, Jesus. Yes, you are the one we worship. You are the one we now lift your hands and worship. We just sang, we are here to worship. Oh, Jesus, we are here to love you. You're amazing, God. You're amazing, Jesus. Jagatere masia panabala di labada. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Redeemer, wonderful God, wonderful Savior. You are special, God. You are wonderful, mighty God. You are great and awesome, oh Jesus. La patera sia pararararidea. Zagate mashia taramazorobayata. We love you, Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. What they want, they want, they want is your name, oh God. You are the light of the world. <laughs> yes, you are the light of the world. Yeah, Jesus. Serepayata rabirabadabada. Zate masia paramatia bare. Zate masia parandiraba. Yela satara maria parabe. Come on, lift your voice and worship. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You're beautiful, Jesus. Oh, no one like you, Jesus. Oh, katere masire la parariate. Oh, Jesus. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made the beauty that made these are the door. Light of the world, one more time, say. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. You open my eyes, let me see. Yes, the very beauty. The beauty that makes these hearts All together, lovely, you're all together, worthy, all together, wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it 
cause to see my sin upon the cross. I'll never know much it cause to see my sin upon the He forgave you on that cross. Lift your hands and acknowledge at the cross, at the cross. He forgave us at that cross. At that cross, He forgave us and washed us at that cross. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for what you did on that cross. Thank you, blessed Savior, blessed Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands and bless the Lord. I said clap your hands for the Lord and bless his holy name. Amen. Glory to God. We are grateful to be here with each one of you and thank you for coming. Tell somebody around you, thank you for coming. Appreciate somebody in the presence of the Lord as we welcome those who are online, those who are watching on TV. We're so blessed. Uh, we are visited. Hallelujah. Yesterday and today, we've been on a mission to Nakuru in Igaton where we've been having a conference the whole of last week and Joro on Monday. So today we just here with you and on our way to Embu for a Passover conference. We want the man of God to teach and minister God's word. Let more lives be built up. And because everything is usually summarized here in the city, we want the people in Marigwene, people in outside Nairobi, people out there to also receive ministry. So tell your cousins and your uncles, whatever, check online, you see where we are, and let them come in. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Sam, having the time shortly to be with us yesterday and today. The platform, the altar is yours. Put our hands together as we bring Sam to Kura. Okay, please, you can take your seats. Thank you. Thank you again, Apostle Juma, for all you do. Without a door, you can enter a place. So he's my good door. Thank you again. Um, let's go to Ephesians. 3 verse 11 Ephesians 3 verse 11 give it to me from the old King James version KJV uh -huh. according to what the eternal purpose which he God proposed in who? In Christ Jesus our Lord. So there is a God purpose. Which God proposed in Christ Jesus that Apostle Paul, Paul the Apostle, labored with other men of God in their generation, spreading the good news, the gospel of Christ, not only to the Jews, but to Gentiles. It was not just a purpose they planned by themselves. 
It was not a church purpose, a Jewish purpose. It was a God purpose. And that purpose of God was not for a short season. The Bible says it's eternal according to what? The eternal purpose. So let nobody come up with something different from that purpose. And that purpose of God is where? Is in Christ. So the moment you are not just in church but in Christ, it's necessary that you become informed, educated, in line with these God purpose. And now when you read on, look at verse 12. Verse 12. Still talking about in Christ. He says, in whom we have what? Boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Boldness, access to God and that God purpose. By the faith of Christ Jesus. Now move on to verse 13. Wherefore, concerning this God purpose, this God plan that is eternal, I desire. Paul was saying to the Ephesian Christians, concerning this God purpose, this God's plan, don't worry, you, you will get more into it shortly. This God purpose that is in Christ Jesus, that is eternal forever, is not a new purpose. It's not to be replaced by some denominational purposes. Because one thing that has made the church so powerless is that each church comes up with its own purpose that differs from God the God purpose. And hear me, the Holy Spirit does not empower human purpose. He empowers the God purpose. The Holy Spirit is not there to anoint human purposes. He backs off when it is a purpose different from the purpose of God. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit for the will of man. He is the spirit for the will of God. So wherever the, oh Jesus, wherever there's a will of God to be done, the Holy Ghost is in completely. He is in both legs, two hands, all eyes, and everything about him gets involved. But the moment, the purpose, Changes from the God purpose to man's purpose to a denominational purpose, the Holy Ghost begins to withdraw and He seems to say, Is your purpose manufacture the power to make your will done? Hmm. So, do you remember the foundation of this purpose was the death of Christ for all mankind? At a point, uh, the Lord Jesus was saying in that garden in the prayer to the Father, Father, if it be your will, let's change the plan. If it be your will, let me not drink this cup. If it be your will, let me not die. Let man die. Let mankind perish. That was the implication of the prayer. And for the first time in the story and testimony of Jesus, there was no answer from the Father. When he said, if it be your will, it's not that he didn't know the will of the Father. He knew it. But the horror of the cross, the pain, the shame of the cross, which he couldn't, you know, that 
that's not a place for any man to go. The cross. The place where criminals ended up. You know, the way you saw Hebrews 12 verse 2. Look at the way he highlights it there. He says we should keep looking unto Jesus. Right? And who is he? He said he's the author. The finisher of our faith. And look at the major things God wants us to take note of there as we keep looking unto him. He says, who for the joy that was what? Set before him. So, as we keep looking unto him, we who also keep looking unto him, there's a joy set ahead of us. So, no matter what you're going through right now, don't think that's your end. There's joy ahead of you. But, in between you and your joy is your cross testimony. What do you say about a cross? Number one, who for the joy that was set before him did what? Endured the cross. He had to make a decision to what? Endure. The cross is not enjoyed but endured. If you are on the pathway of Christianity, get ready for endurance. If, you know, a major thing anytime the church is left, is gone off the real spirit of Christ, the church seeks enjoyment and avoids anything that has to do with endurance. You won't go far with God if all you seek is enjoyment. Did I confuse you here? Looking unto Jesus. This is a call for all Christians in all ages. As we look unto him. We'll say two things. Two things about him. A major thing is the cross. Christianity without a cross it's no Christianity. In fact, you hear the Lord say, whosoever will follow me, let him take his cross and follow me. How? Daily. So the cross is not something you remember once in a while. The cross is a daily life experience. When Satan wants to move the church from the glory of Christ, he moves us from the cross. Because when you get to the issues of the cross, you've got things to endure. You hear Paul say to the Corinthian church, when I was with you, I desired to know nothing save what? Christ and him crucified. Hmm? All right, run with me. So what are the two things here in Hebrews 12 verse 2? This Jesus what to look unto. This Jesus what to keep our eyes on. Hey, lady, are you sleeping? Wake up for me. Good morning. You can sleep at this moment. Oh, were you meditating on the message? No. Am I wasting your time? All right. So, what are the two things we must lay hold on as we keep looking unto Jesus? And hear me. Anyone who is tru truly looking unto Jesus, who has not moved eyes away from him, who has not shifted focus from him, you will see that the cross keeps standing tall in that life. And the cross is the place of death. Death to self and death to the world. <clears throat> but it is the gateway to resurrection power. 
Unfortunately, the church seeks resurrection power but avoids the gateway to resurrection power. Any time the church, a people of God, move away from the cross and seek the power, we may meet with strange power, not the real Jesus power. So you will see people walking, trying to walk in power, but have died to nothing. Alive to themselves in their will, but wanting to operate in power. Alive in the way of the world and still want to operate in the power of resurrection. It won't work. It will be confusion. It will be disgrace to the church. So, what do you see? This Jesus we have to keep looking unto. He says, who for the joy that was set before him did what? Endured. Now, before we look at those two things there, look at the joy. What is the joy set before him? Where he's now set. He's set down where? At the right hand of the throne of God. There's no higher joy than that. No seat on earth compares to that seat. Woohoo! Don't trade your heavenly seat for earthly seats. Sure. <clears throat> you know, two brothers and their mama came to Jesus with a prayer point. The sons of Zebedee. Do you remember their story? You know, Jesus <laughs> got them when they were mending their nets with their father. Jesus came and looked at the two boys and said, John, you, you. Follow me without taking permission from their father. A point comes when he shows up not taking permission from anyone. Just like when he needed a donkey. He said, go, you'll find a donkey tied where two roads meet. Those men tied it for their plan, but, I, but they don't know it's for me who made the donkey. The maker will not take permission from he who either bought it. Or even stole it. <laughs> oh Lord. He said, don't go there asking questions. Who owns this? No, just untie it. And I said, untie it. If anybody says to you, why are you untying it? Tell him, the Lord has need of it. And he will let it go. Hey, may we enjoy the, the lordship of the Lord in our lives and ministries again. Where we don't take permission but break through what holds lives and holds lands. That authority must return to the church. Where we don't negotiate with devils. Oh God. Alright, let me run. So those two boys and their mama, they came. I don't know why Mr. Zebedee didn't come for that prayer point. <laughs> Maybe he was still angry that Jesus took his sons from him, from family business. <laughs> you know, they were mending their nets. You remember? What does that mean? It means their nets were broken. It means... You know, you go into mending nets, especially when you are too poor to go for new nets. So there was something about the family of the Zebedees. So the call of Jesus was a call bringing them out of the limitations and the poverty of the family. If John and James had died fishermen. We wouldn't know about them today. But look at what he called them out from and look at what he called them into. Everywhere you go now, they have popularized the names John, 
James, even kings, when they give birth to a royal boy, they say, name him John. Name him James, who have King James Bible. <laughs> Did they give King James that name? James, because James was a good fisherman. No, it's because he was called out of something by Jesus and into eternal glory of being a follower, a servant of Christ with unusual glory and power. So everybody wants, do, you know, if your name is Frog and you succeeded in life, people will start naming their children Frog. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. They came to Jesus and they said, the mother spearheaded a prayer. He said, it's like, well, Lord Jesus, we didn't struggle with you in taking these two boys. But please, honor us that when you get into your kingdom, these two boys will one sit on the right and one on the left. Remember? <laughs> and Jesus said, do you know what you're asking for? Can you drink the cup I will drink? Can you experience, will you agree to be part and share in the agony of my baptism? Not water baptism now. is a death baptism. A baptism of suffering. Will you? You are asking for the honor and the glory that follows the suffering. Will you agree to suffer with me? And here are men what they were called for, they have not yet started anything about it. But they are already asking for seats. Oh. Hey. But I'm saying this because what is the joy set for Jesus? He is set at the right hand of God. There are seats for us. If you go through scriptures, the Lord keeps saying, there are seats who will judge in the millennium, name it and all that. There are seats of glory. You can't sit tight at ease in Zion now and have a good seat tomorrow in the, in the supernatural that's coming. Many of us just want good seat in church. You come and you want where people have, have made it, everything ready and you just relax. It is those who are standing for him now that will have seats tomorrow. Sure. Oh, Lord. Now, look at these two things you are going to find about the Lord Jesus, who we are to keep looking on to. He said, who for the joy that was set before him did what? Number one, he endured the cross. Never think that the cross you are wearing on your neck or the earring one is the cross we are talking of here. That's just jewelry. But the old rugged cross, you don't wear it. It's on you. It will bend you. In fact, you will fall under it sometimes like he fell under it. It's not a sweet experience. <sighs> Despising the shame. The cross has shame. Hear me. If you don't make up your mind on what to do with shame, shame can make you go out of the will of God. Let me break it down. Hmm. Do you know what it meant for he who was raising the dead, casting out devils, doing all forms of miracles, and he's the maker of all mankind, accepting to be hanging there naked. People he made, we slap him, pa, and say, prophesy, who slapped you? Now, nah, you couldn't do that to Moses. You dared not do that to Elijah. Fire will come down, the earth will open to take you in. But he who made Moses and made Elijah became lamb. 
and had to endure it. Wake up. The woman by your side. Yeah. Good morning, madam. Have I wasted your time? You are awake now very well. Good. <laughs> All right, let me tidy it up. Because it's a short moment. <clears throat> that was not a joke. In the same city, he had done all kinds of miracles. And they said he has done all things well. Now they are pushing him. God accepted to be pushed around and kicked and spat upon. You know, part of the climax of his temptation on the cross was when they said to him, if you are the Christ that you claim to be, come down. If you're able to come down, save yourself, then we will believe you. Do you know he could have done that? Okay. But he must finish drinking the cup. He wasn't to drink it halfway. You know, some of us, when God is preparing us for something great, a cup is put in our hand. We drink a little and say, God, please. But he had to finish it. Some of us have tasted cups, but you didn't drink your cup. Ew. And because you only tasted, you didn't drink it all, you were not qualified for all that God planned to give you. <clears throat> okay, let me run. He endured it. You know, any man who is going far will suffer many things. Don't be ashamed if it is a good cause. If you are in the will of God and the world fights you, and things seem not to go right in the way the world defines things to be right. But you know you are right with God. Bear the shame. Because the shame is not the end of the journey. That's a joy. For joy cometh in the morning. God will not make the morning break at midnight. Sure. You didn't get that. You know what it means by joy comes in the morning? It means all the hours of the night must expire. Sure. It means you will say, God, this is quit midnight. Let my joy, where's my joy? He said, there's six more hours. <laughs> there are prayers you pray that heaven is saying it's not time to answer this prayer. It's just like Psalm 23. It's a very sweet psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Even people that the Lord is not their shepherd, they love that psalm. <laughs> when they're going to bed, they read it. And they put it under their pillow. They're traveling, they carry that psalm and read it. But you know, even for those that the Lord is their shepherd, they love it for the aspect that they shall not want anything. <laughs> you love it when there's green pasture that he makes you to lie on. You know, when sheep lies on pasture, it means it has eaten so much and is now where full, so much now lying on it. Who doesn't like such a life? Any brother sheep or sister sheep will like that. 
<laughs> then still waters. The purpose of the still waters is not just for a wash down of what you have eaten. It is to instill in you a still spirit. Like the psalmist will say in another place, be still and know that I am God. The word still means unshakable. It means unmovable. It means despite what is happening, you are just there. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, there are things that happen to us that keep moving us and shaking us here and there. But there's a spirit you drink that makes you still. The power of stillness is in the spirit that you drank. That no matter what happened that could have moved others, you are still watching and waiting for the salvation of the Lord. Mm. All right. Go back to Ephesians. Let's run. Because we don't have the time. So what do you see in Ephesians? Ephesians chapter 3. Remember we're there. That's where we began. We will, we will just run through a few more verses and we're done. So. Remember. Verse 11. There's an eternal purpose. Right? And that purpose is generational. It's, it's a God purpose. It, it's, it's not something that uh, is for a while. No. It's not for some old time religion Christians. No. It cuts across all generations. Huh. And it is where? In Christ. And it is when we come into Christ that we have Boldness, according to verse 12, and what? Access into this God purpose. You know, you can just be in church, but you don't have access to divine realities of the kingdom. Most people that go to church only have access to church building, but no access into God. God and the things of the reality of the divine. But if you are truly in Christ, not just in a church building, not just in a denomination, but in Christ, Paul will now say, hey, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things are gone. Behold, all things have become new. Now in this Christ, we have Boldness. We have access with confidence by the faith of Him. Now, run, let's run. Verse 13. Wherefore I desire that ye what? Faint not at my what? Tribulations. <laughs> Paul now says to the efficient church, I, 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 I desire concerning this God purpose, I desire that ye faint not. At what? Now, I, I wanted to look at the language in that verse. Faint, that ye faint not at what? My tribulations for you, which is your glory. Now let's understand. A major summary of these God purpose is glory. The glory of God. He who has called us into give me first Peter first Peter five verse ten. Look at the way Peter puts it there. First Peter five verse ten. But God, the God of all grace, who has what? Called us unto what? His eternal glory. This is the God purpose. Sin cut us shut from this glory. For, for all have sinned and come short of this glory. 
But the dying of Christ is the restoration to this glory. I love that. Jesus, blessed your name. Blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. It's a call by the forces of all grace. Diversities of grace come together to ensure your calling is true and sure and secure and successful in getting you out of where you are to where you should be. Not some grace will do it. All grace. You need all kinds of grace coming together. Hallelujah. So what do you see here? Go back. And he calls it eternal glory. Eternal purpose of God. Now, go back to Ephesians. Let's run. According. No. Now go to verse. I think we'll go to verse 13. The desire verse. Verse 13. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations. Who is talking? Paul. So, the man who is to help you come into these realities, he has troubles. The devil will not play jokes with such a person. Anyone with the true, true gospel, the devil never jokes with such a person. The person will know trouble. If you don't know trouble, then you have not troubled the devil. Oh, sure. This trouble is, uh, is what another word for it will be persecution. <laughs> you know, look, 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 look at how he put it. Second Peter 2, no, Second Thessalonians 2, verse 18. I think it should be first. No. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 18 where it says but Satan hindered us. Is it first or second now? Okay. Give me verse 18. First Thessalonians 2 verse 18. Give it to me. First Thessalonians 2 verse 18. Quickly. Uh oh. Is, is the person there? Uh huh. Uh -huh yeah. First Thessalonians two verse eighteen. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even who I who Paul, how many times? Once and again. But what happened? Satan hindered us. Now that's not a joke. For not a demon hindered us, not a principality somewhere hindered, it's Satan himself. Satan took it upon himself and said, hey, you demon, you can't do, handle this case. I, I take it upon myself. A point comes when Satan does not delegate a demon. He goes himself. Depending on how serious you are with God and how serious the will of God is about your life and how it will impact his kingdom. So, yeah, Satan hindered us. Why was Satan hindering them? Look at the next verse, verse 19. For what is our hope? Or what? Joy. Or crown of rejoicing. When? He said, are not even who? Ye. When? In the presence of the Lord. In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. When? At his coming. In other words, Paul was saying, you human beings that I affect and by the gospel change your lives and call you out of darkness into God's marvelous light and you are a partaker of his eternal glory. 
on that day in the presence of the Lord when he comes, you are our joy. You are our crown of rejoicing. Meaning on that day, you have no joy or rejoicing if you have nobody you have affected their lives gospel-wise. Sister, you are battling with sleep. Defeat it. Because you are losing. Why did you come for lunch? Hour and you are missing out. Have I wasted your time? Oh God, the time is gone. Let me close the matter. <sighs> Why was Satan hindering Paul? So that when the Lord will appear, he has no crown that he's talking about here. You think when the Lord returns, it's going to be joy for everybody? There's this part of joy that you won't have because there's nobody you affected for God. You didn't affect anybody for God. You didn't support the church and the ministers who are doing it for God. You are just there for yourself. You may make heaven, but this crown of rejoicing. He says what? Look at it. He says, ye are. For what is our hope? Or joy. Or crown of rejoicing. Are not even who? Ye. People. People. The gospel is about people. It's not just about buildings. Hey, it's people. Who have you affected your lives for God? It's getting you ready for joy and a crown. Look at the next verse, there, verse 20. For ye are what? Our joy and our glory. So uh, by now you begin to know already if you are going to have joy and glory that day that he's talking about because you know your record. Who have you affected for God? We beg you, you are not affecting anybody for God and the church or the leaders who are doing it, you are not supporting them in any way. <laughs> Let not Satan use you to hinder those who are affecting others. Gosh. Finally, Go back to the Ephesians as I close. Oh Lord, the time is up. I think that clock is correct, right? Oh, I've got to stop here. So when you go to that Ephesians 3, number one, it says, Wherefore I desire that you faint not. Wait a minute. These people are fainting at Paul's tribulation. Their own tribulation has not come. They are fainting for another man's tribulation. Where, what will happen when their own trouble comes? Sure. <laughs> you can see how weak this church is. That Paul has to raise up the matter of fainting. They are not fainting at their own tribulation. They are fainting at the tribulation of the man bringing the gospel to them. And you know, every true Christian will have a share in tribulation. You will have your own share of trouble. You have your own share of persecution. And the reason why Satan is not hindering you is because you are not on the way to doing anything against his kingdom. So he has no reason to bother you. So some of you are saying, thank God is not bothering me. It's because you are not a bother to his kingdom. Oh Lord. So, how will he help this church that is already fainting, not at their own tribulation, but at his tribulation? This is not a church ready for trouble yet. So, what did he say? Verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knee. He goes into prayer. Unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. It's time to bend the knee for this church. Huh? A church that does not understand the oneness of heaven, the church in heaven, the realities of heaven and the earth that must become one family. Oh no, let's, let me run. The time is gone. F Fifteen, that he will grant unto... Sixteen, grant unto you what? Look at the, the focus of the prayer point. He grants unto you what? 
Verse 16. That he grants unto you what? Look at that verse 16. 16 place. 16. That he would grant unto you. Remember, his knees bowed in prayer. What's the prayer point? That God will grant unto this faint-hearted church according to the riches of his glory to be what? Strengthened with might by his spirit. Where? In the inner man. Because if somebody faints, it's a state of the heart. If you fought, wonder what is making many people faint, you have no idea. It's not, Satan has not even come up and they are fainting. <laughs> when Satan zeroes in on you to hinder you, brother, that's not a joke. Only the lion-hearted can survive it. According to his riches and glory, strengthened by the spirit, Mind strengthened with mind by his spirit, where in the inner man, oh God, okay, go to verse, you know, read or just read, read, and let me stop in two minutes. Time is gone, I'm, I can't, you know, by the time you are strengthened with mind in the inner man, you'll be a rooted Christian, a Christian that root is rooted, has roots, not a floating Christian. Not a climber Christian. You know, in, in agriculture, in, in, the, in plants, there are plants, naturally that plants are supposed to have roots. Right? But there are plants in biology you call climbers. <laughs> How many of you have read that in your Bible? <laughs> Who are climber Christians? Climbers are plants that have no connection with the ground. <laughs> but they have climbed on others who have roots. <laughs> Climber brothers and sisters. You are not grounded, you are not rooted. And that's why if anything happens to what you climbed, both of you are coming down. But as the Holy Spirit succeeds in giving you might, where? Inside, the inner man. The real you inside. A rooted person is not just rooted outwardly, but on the inside. A grounded person established is inside. Those are internal matters. And that's what the problem Samson had. He had the Spirit coming upon him mightily from Acts. But he was a weak man inside. If God does not balance it for us, and we only have might, we will kill lions outside, but we little, little temptations knock us off. Have mercy. So, look at that verse. Look at verse, uh, verse 18. May that you may be able to comprehend. These are prayers. His, his knees bowed. It's not, he wasn't preaching. He said, I bow my knee. Those are his prayer points. Ah, that you may be rooted. You may be grounded. Ah, that you will comprehend, understand with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of the love of God. You are not just a floating Christian looking for a simple seat in church. You are deep. You are high. You are spread. You have height and length and breadth in God. You know, there are so many that we can't talk of you in spiritual height. We can't talk of your spiritual depths. We can't talk of your spiritual length. We can't talk of your spiritual breadth. You are just there. Oh God. Verse 19, to know the love of Christ with passing knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Can you imagine where God is bringing us to? To be full of what? All the fullness of God. Now, let's understand that briefly. Hear me. You don't have a cup here. If you poured water into 
the Chinese teacup, the British one, those tiny ones. You know, that's a, that's a vessel. Every one of us is a vessel. But the question is, what is the capacity of the vessel? What is the debt? So if we all here receive the Holy Ghost baptism, what God did was to fill up the space he found. And some of you, when you came and said, Lord, fill me, it was a teacup that came. And when a teacup is filled, the teacup was also speaking tongues. Banana, banana, banana. Apple, apple, apple. And the trouble with the teacup is it doesn't satisfy you alone. So if it doesn't satisfy you, can we tell a village of a thousand people to come and drink from that cup? No. Because the amount of the Holy Ghost you have is not even sufficient for you alone. So we can't tell others to queue up around you. Oh Lord. So the fullness of God. It means God must keep enlarging your capacity. Because that is too big to understand. To be filled with God is different from being filled with all the fullness of God. So many times God wants to fill you. But there was no space. And you didn't bother to say, Lord, enlarge me. And when the vessels finished, the oil stopped flowing for that woman. You remember that woman is kings? So finally, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able to do these things we are asking for. He's able to do them exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Right? Look at the end of that verse. All these things God is going to be doing, he's going to be doing them according to the power that worketh in us. What does that mean? According to the measure of the power at work in you. God cannot work in you beyond how much the Holy Ghost has entered you walking. He can't walk in the same measure he walks with the, with the apostle with you because the amount of the Holy Ghost power at work in you is not the same with his. Father, increase me for more of you. Increase your power in me so that you can walk all things exceedingly, abundantly, in accordance, in agreement with the measure of the power that keeps increasing in me. If the power of God does not increase in you, you won't see much God workings. The workings of God are proportional with the amount of the Spirit of God in you working. Father, have your way. In Jesus' name. Let's stand upon our feet. One of the ways to increase our capacity and increase the space is through prayer. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, give me the spirit of prayer. Just make that prayer quickly. Father, give us the spirit of prayer so that we can expand our capacity so that when you pour out the spirit in this season, there is space for you to occupy. Lord, do it in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, you increase. Increase us, oh God. Your word will also expand our capacity. Your word, your word, your word will expand our capacity. Lord, thank you that we are hearing. We shall never be the same again. Pray in the Holy Ghost, somebody. Taka zekete boshia zadaya. Shatera zia rabado rabadada. I want more of you. Yeah. I want more of you. Jesus. 
the more that I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. I want more, I want more of you. Is that your prayer, somebody? Jesus, I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow, have you been blessed? Learn to pursue the things you hear. Let's pursue them. This place is open for prayer. We're going to be gathering in the evening. And we're going to expand capacity a little bit more. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's give our offerings for time is gone. We thank God, uh, God's servant for ministering to us. May the Lord expand you and just graciously keep filling you for us. Amen. Tell somebody, be generous. When you hear the word like this, be generous. Okay. God bless you. Those who must rush, here is the offering bag. You can put it there. And the numbers on the screen. Let's give. And the Lord bless you so mightily. Shalom. We'll see you in the evening service. The more I know you, the more.